Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so this week we are going to Venice in our minds with a beautiful ode to Monet's uh, Sunset Venice painting. A uh, very gorgeous and sort of simplified rainbow version of this painting that I have for you guys today. So we're going to use our three standard brushes. So I have a flat wash brush. I have a medium sized pointed brush now with a little bit of white on it. <laughs> uh, I have my tiny little baby brush as well and a full rainbow of colors. So I have black and white, cadmium red, nice bright orange, yellow, uh, a grass green, and then two different types of blue. So I have a cobalt blue as well as an ultramarine blue. Check the description box below for a more detailed materials list of everything that you'll need to paint along. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. I have my water cup off the side of the screen. And the first brush that I'm going to use is that medium size uh, pointed sable brush. So go ahead and grab your red. And we're going to start today's painting by just creating a red line that breaks our canvas right in half. So horizontally here, and this does not need to be a straight line at this point at all. Although mine looks pretty straight. <laughs> uh, we're just going to get this nice big strip of red here when we're done. I'm going to grab my big brush. Now you can stick with the uh, medium size pointed brush if you would prefer uh, for this step but I'm gonna save time and use my larger brush and you can actually use this brush uh, with its side or with its face so you have two different widths there to work with but we're gonna start fattening up uh, that red stripe but we don't want to do this like really stripey so what I'm gonna end up doing is creating some of those side brush strokes kind of towards the outside uh, of that strip of red. And then I'm going to use that to sort of roughly blend into my next color, which is going to be orange, both on top of the red and on bottom. So orange and red are right next to each other on the color wheel. So it's very simple to blend one into the other. So that's kind of what's fun about this painting is that it's like a step-by-step -step, uh, full rainbow uh, spectrum of colors. We kind of walk our way there. So each step is going to blend with the color before it. Okay, so you guys see. Now, what might have happened is that you went too far in, perhaps, with your orange and covered too much of your red. Don't worry, we're going to have a chance to add more red later. So this is actually going to be kind of like a two-part rainbow uh, step before we add the silhouette. So don't worry if it's not looking quite how you like yet. We are just beginning. Rinsing my brush so that it's not too much orange that I'm bringing into my yellow. I am making sure that my brush is dry. Things are already getting a little messy. <laughs> Uh, I'd love to know uh, if you're painting along, let me know in the comment section. I also have a Facebook group that I created for students to share their art called the, the Art Club. Uh, and the link to that Facebook group is also in the description box if you'd like to join us over there. I'd love to see what you're painting. Blending now orange into yellow. Kind of took that yellow orange on the side of my brush and just bringing that right where my yellow and orange meet. Now see, I blended that really nicely, uh, nice and rough, but now I'm gonna rinse my brush so that I'm not taking this orange that I know is on there further out because we wanna now bring this into green. You'll probably need to get fresh water uh, at break. So we are gonna take a break in a few minutes and let this layer dry. So now working our way out to green. We want to make sure that we still have space for both of our blues. So don't get too crazy with your green or your yellow. Gotta leave space. This is very different than Monet's original composition. Not trying to copy exactly, just inspired from it. Uh, I'm a big fan of 
just this silhouette type painting. I think that this original kind of inspired a lot of my different paintings, which will be very simple, like horizon lines with just lovely little black silhouettes. Check out the original Monet. I'll go ahead and leave a link uh, to more information about that. Check out, there's always a lot of good stuff in the description box. So check the description box for supplemental information uh, about this painting and about Painting Along the Sky. Okay, looks good. Rinsing my brush in between each color, being patient, taking my time. Lovely Saturday morning today. Okay, two nice strips of blue, just having a little bit of space still for my darker blue. So cobalt blue is more of a true blue, whereas the ultramarine has a little bit, like a hint of purple. So using my brush on the side and then sometimes on the face, depending. Do I want a streaky blend? Or do I want to kind of use it as a tool to help me make things look more soft? Because you can kind of just whoop, pull that along as well. Okay, almost done with the first step. Liking how this is looking. We're going to keep all of our paint colors uh, too, by the way. So make sure and keep these. Uh, and we're just going to give our canvas a few minutes to dry once we've added this last layer. That'll allow us to apply a really nice dark silhouette uh, for our beautiful cathedral. And also add some more layering rainbow colors. We actually want to have some visible brush strokes in this next part. Uh, as well as just some layering. So we're going to let this dry for a minute. Once we get it all filled in to a beautiful abstract rainbow that honestly, I think already looks pretty cool. Okay. Trying to just make a subtle transition from one blue to the other. Okay. That looks great to me. Let's go ahead and let this dry and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back with a dry background. I still have all my colors because I'm going to use quite a few of those. Uh, and I already prepped my black on here, so I want to use that. I do have fresh, clean water now. And I'm going to now grab my medium-sized pointed brush. I'm going to add a few more different colors. Uh, and sort of help this look like it was more a uh, series of gradual brush strokes uh, than blending. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to start with this beautiful dark blue. I'm going to do just a few brush strokes that sort of come into the light blue. So we're helping that gradation just look a little bit streakier rather than so blended. Okay, so just a few brush strokes like so. We're gonna do it up top as well. Um, up top though, there was clouds because this is our sky and then our ocean is down below. Uh, so if you want, you can actually kind of add some scribbly texture too. As well as the back and forth texture like so, uh, just to create the illusion of some clouds or not, you don't have to do that. That can be a little bit daunting. Uh, this painting does look spectacular with all just the back and forth brush stroke texture as well. Okay, rinsing out the blue. Now I'm gonna do something similar with red. So kind of working with my darker colors first, uh, especially right along the horizon line. I wanna make sure I have some nice dark red and some streaks. Oops, pulled a little bit of black, but that's not terrible, really. Just makes it a little bit of a darker red. 
Let's go with it. It's a happy accident. Like Bob Ross would say. We're gonna add more orange and yellow too. So just kind of starting with the darker colors with my shadows. And that'll be good too because we'll have our black uh, silhouette. So the dark red, I'm, f I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Okay, that looks great. Now let's add some lighter colors. Let's do some light yellow. While well, our water is nice and clean. So just a little bit of white there. I'm just going to come into the neighboring areas with that yellow. I want to leave some really bright yellow visible as well. It's really just a few brush strokes. Nothing too crazy. It's more about the cumulative effect than each color individually. So being sparing sometimes. Just a few brush strokes is all you need. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of pink, so that was just a little bit of white mixed in with my red. Pulling it down just a little bit further. See that gorgeous reflection on the water. Okay, that's looking really, really good. I'm feeling it. Now I'm gonna add some light blue top here. It's a little bit of white mixed in with my cobalt blue. And I'm going to also add some scribblies of the cobalt just to again sort of suggest sky texture and clouds. I like that. And you can add some light blue again in the reflection. So see how interesting uh, this composition really has already gotten comparatively to when it was just that smooth gradation. Okay, look at how pretty is that. Okay. I think I'll add some green as well. So light green, a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of yellow as well. Just making sure that the green is not lost. Okay, I'm feeling it. I think that looks great. Go ahead and grab our baby brushes now, smallest little detail brush that you have, and we're going to work with some silhouettes now. Now, this time you do want to try to make a really straight line, so at first, didn't matter. This time, you might even want to pull out a ruler. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Okay, so apparently that dot is going to be right where my cathedral is. This is actually a good time to remind everyone why I don't use easels. Because if I had got a drop on something that was tilted up, it would have come down and just gone through all of my beautiful colors. Uh, so that's actually why I prefer to paint just on a flat surface. Just a little pro tip there. Or is it a simpler tip? It feels less professional, you know, to just paint on a tabletop. So when I would do my pop-up art party classes, people, I would usually not bring an easel. Um, people would be like, I want an easel. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you do not, trust me. They also tip over, um, particularly if you're, if you're teaching outside, which I always was. Uh, so a lot of disasters would happen. That are not quite happy accidents. So I'm going back over there and kind of just making it as straight as possible. And then I'm also sort of thickening it up on this side, which is where I'm going to have my cathedral. 
and sort of seeing if I can straighten the horizon line as much as possible. Okay, that looks good. I feel like I went over like my brightest red, so I might add a little bit more red already, I can feel. Um, but let's go ahead and break down this cathedral shape. So it's actually pretty simple. So let's start by doing like the big dome. So that's going to be almost like a bracket shape is what that reminds me of. And then it's going to come down pretty much straight. And then you're going to have a little building that comes off to the side like so and down. And then one more little building like so. And it comes out as like a flat rectangle. Got kind of too far over. So you want to have a little gap. And then over here, I'm just going to do a couple rectangles to just kind of suggest buildings over there. I'm going to create a rectangle over here. And on top of that, I'm going to have my nice big tower. Uh, so let's go ahead and go pretty far up. I'm trying to do again as straight of a line as I can. And then you're just going to thicken it up on either side. And I'm actually going to add like a thicker base as if there was like a little room up there. Not exactly positive of the architecture inside the building. And then you're just going to go ahead and fill it in with black. It's going to look a lot better once you do. And you can kind of smooth out your shape and finesse it, as I like to say. As you fill it in. Don't worry if it looks a little bit blocky right now. We're going to add some red. That's going to break it up. Okay, looks good. Just the suggestion of that shape. No details needed when you're working with silhouettes, which I love. Okay, you don't actually even need to be really neat. I have a tendency to get things really neat and tidy. I'm very detail oriented, but Monet's was much messier uh, and more loose and fluid and had more movement because of that. So be loose and fluid. That's actually what we're going for here. That's the idea. I'm going to do a couple really tiny little brush stroke flicks up from this side over here. Uh, and that might be, you know, church tops, building tops, or even like um, boats. Because uh, again, we're in Venice here. So I'm going to do that same kind of thing over here. Just a few little baby brush strokes coming up. And then I could even maybe do like buildings in the background. Over there. How cute is that? Okay, let's go ahead and do the reflection. Uh, we're just going to be mimicking the shape above, underneath, in the water but it's gonna be horizontal brush strokes, so not like the whole shape. It's right underneath where your building would be. How pretty is this? Loving already how it's turning out. And I really think the prettiest part of this painting is the reflection of the tower, which we're gonna bring pretty far down. I think that just really adds a nice little something. Okay, that's so cute. My other favorite part is the red reflection. So go ahead, rinse that brush. And then our little piece of the resistance here is gonna be to take some red. We're gonna bring it in the tower. Just really pretty red on that black in the buildings as well just kind of adding it here and there i'm going on the left side of these shapes for the most part as if 
the sun is maybe coming from, I'm not quite totally sure, I guess like over here and then hitting like the left hand side uh, with the very low in the daylight. That's a bit too technical. Just throw some red in there. Kind of wiggle your brush around in the shape. I'm going to also add just a tiny, tiny bit more red in my water. Um, just because from before, I kind of got too heavy-handed. I'm just going to pull that red just a little bit more in here. Because I really want that vibrant red by my horizon. And I think that is pretty much... A finished painting. Let's see. I want this to come up a little bit further. Details like that are super important to be honest. Okay. Maybe this guy up a tiny bit more too. We'll make sure it's nice and straight. Okay. I'm feeling it. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section. Again, if you painted along, I would love to see your work over in the art club. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Hit like and subscribe if you did. And until next time, stay creative.